Okay, so remember that the solution to a system of equations is the set of all the points that satisfy both our equations. Okay, in Algebra 1, we're just doing systems with two equations or two inequalities. Um, so we can say both for now. As you get higher up into math, they'll start adding more variables and more equations. You can say all or both. Uh, to find our solutions, we are looking for points that are on both of our curves. That is where the curves intersect. Okay, so these you're going to like. We just get to eyeball it. Where do these two curves intersect? One, One three. three. Good. Okay, now we have to talk about this because, like, I know that you guys can see. If you zoom in on here, it kind of looks like they're touching kind of from here all the way to here. You know what I mean? It kind of looks like they're touching that whole time. What I need you to know is that the reason it looks like that is because in order to draw the graphs, we have to give the line thickness. In actuality, this parabola and this line are infinitely thin. You can't even see the graphs because they don't have any width. I know it's kind of weird to think about, but in order to represent them on our graph, we have to give them a width that they don't have so that we can see them with our eyes. And it's the width of the representation that looks makes it look like it's touching for more than one point, but it's not. It's just that one point where they touch. Everybody satisfied with that? Okay. What about this one? And? Okay. Okay, what about the last one? No. Correct. We have no solutions. Now, don't shift down yet. This should feel this should feel very similar from what we did in units five and six. Okay, we had these same options when we were solving quadratics. Remember that if we had a parabola that bounced off the x-axis and only touched it once, we would have the one solution, right? If we had a parabola that crossed the x-axis twice, we would have two solutions, okay? If we had a parabola that never touched the x-axis, we would have no solutions. Okay, so we have the same options that we had in Unit 6. Now, it's going to blow your minds a little bit to think about this, but in Unit 6, we were kind of solving a system, even though we didn't really talk about it yet. Do you guys remember what we made the Y every single time? Zero. Yeah. So every single time, we used the equation for the x-axis, which was y equals 0. So we found, really guys, come on, where's box? we found where our parabola intersected with the line y equals 0, and we made that substitution and solved for the x's that made it true. So you guys were solving systems the whole time, and you didn't even know it. Okay? The difference with our work today is that we're obviously using lines that aren't just y equals zero. We're going to use all kinds of lines and find where those cross with our parabolas. Cool? All right, here we go. Uh, we are going to solve by graphing. Duh. And we're going to find the intersections. Can you stop, please? Why? 
All right, so we have to graph by hand. Look at my first equation. What do you see about the powers and what do you expect the graph to look like? I expect it to look like the ones above. Okay. Which part of it? The, the what? Linear line. That's... Yeah, the linear line. Okay, so do you see that the powers on X and Y are both 1? Yeah. Okay, guys, this is going to be a line. Okay? So the expectation is that we should have a line for the first equation. So we've got a y-intercept, a b-value of negative 4, and a slope of 2. Okay, we can use our slope to find more points from our given point by rising and running. 2 over 1. Up 2, right 1, up 2, right 1. And we're back to graphing equations, so I'm doing a shaded solid line because all of the points on this line make that equation true. What? Yep. All right, what do you notice about the second equation? It's got a power of 2, so what does that make it? Quadratic, and what shape is that? Yeah, like a U, a parabola. All right, check out the A value. Okay, remember it's Y equals the A times X minus H squared plus K. That's vertex form. Okay, what is the coefficient in front of those parentheses? Uno, A is 1. Okay, be careful, H lies. What's the H? Positive 2 is the H, and what's the K? Negative 3. Correct. Okay, remember that the H and K tell us the vertex. They're the X and Y coordinates of the vertex. So 2, negative 3, that's down here. Now... Instead of using rise over run to graph more points, remember that we had a graphing pattern for parabolas that was based on the parent function. If I square 1, I get 1. If I square 2, I get 4. If I square 3, I get 9. So we decided that if we went from our vertex left or right one unit, we would have to go up 1 because 1 squared is 1. Okay? What about 2? Four. Four. Three. Nine. Nine. And our A is one, so when we multiply all of these by our A value, they don't change, right? Right. Okay, so we don't have to stretch it. So from your vertex, left one, up one, and I have an intersection. Right one, up one. From my vertex, start at the vertex. Left two, up four. Right two, up four. Not yet, not yet. Okay, left three, up nine. You should be at the point negative one, six. And then last, right three from my vertex and up nine, I'm at the point five, six, which is my other intersection. Okay, now back in unit five when we were graphing quadratics, we said we needed five points, a vertex and five more points. Count how many points on that parabola I needed to graph. Seven. So in this unit, it's at least five because you might have to graph another point or two to see clearly where the intersection happens. Does that make sense? Okay, so it's at least five. Question or just tug? Okay. So my solutions are the points 1, negative 2, and 5, 6. 1, negative 2, and 5, 6. So it's kind of like review. Let's see. 
The graphing should be review anyway. Good, 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 good. Yeah. All right, next. All right, check out my first equation. Quadratic or linear? Quadratic. Quadratic. Look at the A value. Which way does this guy open? Down. Down, because the A is negative 1. Okay, what is the H? Be careful. Negative 3. Negative three, good. And what is the K? Zero. Okay, so my vertex is at negative three, zero. Okay, my pattern says that if I go uh, left or right, One, I go up one. Left or right two, I go up four. Three, nine. But my A is negative. So instead of going up, I'm going to go down, down because I'm multiplying all of these by negative one. Oh, man. So I get... Negative 1, negative 4, and negative 9. Okay. So right and left 1, down 1. Left to right 2, down 4. Uh, that's all we have room for. The other one would be like right there and right there. Right? Hopefully all we need are 5. Okay, look at my next equation. What kind of graph do you expect this to be? Yeah. A linear line. A linear line. Yeah. You expect it to be a straight line. So, can I graph using my uh, B value and my slope? No. You're correct. Why not? Because it's 2y. Because it's 2y. So, how are we going to undo the multiplying? Yeah, you got to divide them apart. So divide both sides of our equation by 2, and we get y equals, there's a 1 in front of the x, so 1 half x plus 2. Okay, so my b is 2. That's where I hit the y-axis. And I rise 1, run 2. So vertically compressed by a factor of one half. That was a fun one. They, don't they don't intersect, so we have no solutions. You are correct. Okay. Here's another fun one, and by fun, I mean we have to do it because it's on the page. Okay, if I have, what kind of a, what kind of a graph do I expect for y equals negative 3? A horizontal asymptote. A horizontal asymptote kind of thing, so a horizontal line, right? Okay, that was very good. So, horizontal. So this is the collection of all the points whose y value is negative 3. 1, negative 3, 2, negative 3, 2 and 3 quarters, negative 3, pi, negative 3. They all have one thing in common, and that is a y value of negative 3. Good? All right. What do you notice about the next one? Yep, we have an x squared, so what kind of graph is this? Quadratic. Now, look at that a value. What does the a tell us? 
It's going to be a vertically stretched one, so it's going to be kind of skinny looking. Okay, now this is a tricky question. What are the H and K? Zero, negative five, good. There's nothing added or subtracted to my X before it gets squared, so I know that my H is zero. Remember, the K is the one that is outside of parentheses. It's just the constant at the end. Okay, zero, negative five, a uh, boom. Now, here's my table, left or right, up, one, one, two, four, three, nine. But my A is two, so what do I have to do? Multiply all them by two. Multiply all my ups, my y's by okay. two. So now I've got two, eight, and 18, you are correct. So from my vertex, left one up two, boom. Right one up two, boom again. Okay, where's eight? There. Notice I'm still doing at least five points, even though I hit right away on my first three points. Well, you know what I mean. Okay, what are my solutions? Negative one. Okay. Negative one what? Okay, negative. Okay, negative one, negative three, and one, negative three. What do they both have in common? The negative three for the y, because this horizontal line says that that is all the y value can be. Okay, easy peasy. All right, we got one more. And we do have to do this one because this one is a little bit different. Okay, look at my first linear. equation. It should be linear. That is going to be a straight line. So I've got a B value of 1 and a slope of 2. Rise 2, run 1. Rise 2, run 1. Across your whole graph. Arrows on both ends because it goes forever. Don't stop. Get it, get it. Okay, now. What looks a little bit weird about this quadratic we've got? It's reflected over the x-axis. Okay, we've got a rock. So which way is it going to open? Okay. What else can you tell me about it? Does it have any parentheses? No. So is it in vertex form? No. No. No, what form is this? Standard? It's in standard form. This is in standard form. So we can't just say what the H and K are. We got to do a little bit of work. Yeah, we got A, B, and C, not A, H, and K. Okay, so it's in standard form. Does anybody remember the trick we have to use to find the H? It comes from the quadratic formula. Negative B over 2? A. A. Yes, teamwork. Okay. So our H is going to be the opposite of our B over 2 times the A value. Okay, so our B is 2. Can you put your phone away? Thanks. All right, so the opposite of 2 is negative 2. Okay, and my A is negative 1, so I pop that in, substitute it. 
Now I have negative 2 over negative 2, which is just one. positive 1. Good recovery. Okay. Okay, this is for all the marbles. Ooh. Marbles. All the bragging rights. Oh, one. Okay, you ready? Yes. Okay, now that we know the H, which is an input, how do we find the K, which is the output? All the marbles! Congratulations! We have to we have to plug it in into the function rule. Right? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Because the H is the X, the K is the Y, right? Okay. Right, right. Okay. So the opposite of, don't forget your parentheses, 1 squared plus 2 times 1 plus 1. Okay, just put it in your calculator. That might be right. Okay, so one squared is one. Yeah. Opposite of one is negative one. Mm -hmm. So this negative one and that positive one cancel, right? Yeah. Two uh, times one is uh, two. two. Okay. <laughs> or make your calculator do it. All right, one, two is my vertex. And you told me that it opens down. So let's use the pattern. One, one, two, four, three, nine. And these are going to be down because our A is negative one. Sounds like a train. <laughs> Sounds like every Johnny Cash song he ever wrote. I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> All right, solutions. One. What is it? Oh, zero one. Zero one. Okay, any questions for me? Yep. 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 Yep.